Well, hello, Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to The Shack and to another homebrew video. And we're moving on a pace now with the transmit chain of this 17 meter rig, uh, because today we're gonna look at the small signal transmit amplifiers. And so these are the, uh, the, the amps that take a tiny uh, uh, amount of power coming uh, out of the, uh, the final mixer, um, uh, and beefing it up so that the, you can then feed it to the driver amp and then to the power amp and then out into your antenna. Um, but before we get into any of that, let's just have a little uh, recap of where all this fits in. So we start with our signal in the microphone, which goes through to the microphone amplifier uh, that we looked at last time and then that goes through into what was the product detector but now on transmit is the balance modulator and it looks a bit different because I've on the top right there is a little audio oscillator that's just producing a tuning tone uh, that I can kind of uh, switch in uh, when I'm tuning up which is handy so um so that obviously obviously mixes the uh, the modulated audio now onto our IF frequency. So uh, that then goes through to the IF stack that we've looked at before, um, which uh, amplifies it, filters out the unwanted sideband in the crystal filter, and then uh, sends that out then to the uh, second mixer, what I call the transmit mixer, which mixes um, our signal then up to uh, the frequency that we want in the 17 meter band and then that will um, send it out to oh yeah <laughs> to the bandpass filter which as you can see is not there at the moment uh, but that's where it will go and uh, and that's where we're picking the story up from uh, now. Right so the task before us is to take our tiny signal coming out of the uh, second mixer and the bandpass filter um, in the region of micro watts and to ramp that up, to amplify it uh, a whole order of magnitude higher to something in the hundreds of milliwatts. So if we're going from microwatts, 10 to the minus six, to milliwatts, 10 to the minus three, then clearly um, that's a factor of a thousand. Um, so, uh, straight away we're looking at at least 30 db of gain that we need to uh, achieve uh, in this stage now that's not a problem but here's the thing if we're taking what is a tiny signal and making it substantially bigger we need to be very careful that that signal that we start off with is as clean as possible because what we'll do is we'll make everything bigger you know, so if you've got harmonics, yeah, they'll be there with <laughs> with bells on. You know, if you've got intermodulation products and other birdies and things, they'll be there much bigger as well. So I can't stress enough the importance of, of trying to, to ensure that the signal that you start off with, the signal that's coming out of that mixer is, is as clean as possible. So that means um, filtering it which we're going to do, we're going to put it through the uh, the bandpass filter, which is the same bandpass filter as, as gets used on uh, on receive. So that should take care of the harmonics. But also, when you're building and tweaking your mixers and your IF section, it's really important to make sure that you've got sufficient carrier attenuation, because you don't want that leaking through, um, and also opposite sideband rejection as well. So that what we end up with at the end of that mixer is is as clean as we can get it and if we can start off there it's much easier to to fix problems when they occur which is generally in the mixers or in the if stages uh, rather than retrospectively trying to you know notch things out later on it, it gets very messy so um so that's that's the thing we need to do so and it's worth spending that time um on those stages, on the mixers and on the IF stage, just to make sure that what we're putting out is as clean as we can get it. Okay, so with that caveat, 
um, let's have a look at the amplifiers that I built. Right, well, here is my small signal amplifier. Um, ignore the bit, the board on the top, this one for now. We'll get to that in a moment. But if you look at the bottom, so where this BNC connector is here on the right, that's where the signal goes through there, through the coupling capacitor. You can probably just about see, hiding behind that capacitor, a 2M3904 transistor. And so that's one stage of amplification here. And then if I move a bit further, here's the second one. This is the second stage of amplification. And that is just that same circuit that I used in the IF stack, um, which I talked about in the um, steering the, uh, the IF section video. Uh, but I will show the schematic uh, uh, in a moment, just so you can see it again. Uh, but yeah, exactly the same, very, very simple. Um, and then that runs via this bit of coax up to this top board. Now this top board is my pre-driver <clears throat> and um, this is kind of my own design. I mean, I say kind of my own design. I probably pinched it from somebody and just adapted it, which is what, <laughs> what, what happens a lot of time, I guess, really. Um, uh, tweaked it and um, modeled it in LT Spice first, which is what I usually do and play around with the values and, and everything else. Um, and um, yeah, it uses these power transistors, so they handle a bit more power. And you can see I've got them dead bug style. They're um, uh, in parallel, actually, so they're back to back. Um, uh, and they're thermally pasted onto uh, the heat sink, which is there. And to be honest, it's probably a bit overkill, but um, you know, as, as we're getting a little bit more power at this stage, I wanted to just uh, make sure I was going to dissipate as much heat as I could. Um, so yes, yeah, so it runs through um, the the, uh, the pre-driver and then back out here, this piece of coax, which reappears down here. And if I turn this around, it's probably a bit easier to see. Yeah, that's where the coax comes in down the bottom. And where those three yellow toroids are, um, that is a low pass filter. And then it's, it goes then to the output BNC. So effectively what's happening is, you're taking that tiny, tiny signal um, that's come from the uh, uh, from the mixer, and and you're making this a little bit bigger uh, down the bottom, and then uh, you're sending it through uh, the uh, the pre driver, which is making it substantially larger, um, and then you're filtering it uh, down here um, to remove any harmonics, clean the signal up. And so you can send it out here and then it will go into the RF driver. Um, so yeah, so it's pretty simple really. Um, I'll show you the schematics for, for both of these and then um, we'll just put it through its paces and uh, show you that it actually works. Right, okay, so here is the first stage of that amplifier then. This is um, the what I'm calling the small signal transmit amplifier. And uh, you've seen this before if you watched uh, a previous video because this is identical to the amplifiers that I built and used in my steerable IF stack. Um, so it's very simple, I won't spend too long going through it. it, it I mean, it's just two identical stages um, connected by a 3dB pi attenuator. Um, so if we take this first stage, for instance, um, uh, you'll see there is a transformer. So yeah, I think it's from memory, I think it's 10 turns by Filar on an uh, FT3743. Um, uh, but the way it's wired, so if you add like a red wire here and a green wire here, you'll see the top red goes down to the bottom green. So what it actually does is it functions as a 2 to 1 voltage transformer and a 4 to 1 impedance transformer. So what that means is that the collector of this transistor sees effectively 200 ohms, which it wants to, um, but the succeeding stage sees 50 ohms, which it wants to. And, uh, and that's going through this uh, pi attenuator anyway. Um, so yeah, that works pretty well. It's got a bit of uh, feedback here, you can see, and some emitter degeneration down here as well. Um, so very simple little circuit, comes from experimental methods in RF 
uh, design um, and all I did was just put two of those together um, uh, with a, a, a 3db pi attenuator in the middle of the sandwich um, and uh, yeah seem, seems to work okay it, to be fair it's <laughs> you're not going to get much more out of it here yeah, I'm pushing it a little bit really um, and we are producing a few harmonics as you'll see when we come to test it at this stage but that's it's not the end of the world because we are going to filter that out um, but I am squeezing it this simple little circuit really I think um, uh, above and beyond uh, really its uh, its capabilities um, but it seems to work um, and here is the schematic for the pre-driver which thinking about it and looking at that circuit looks awfully familiar I'm sure <laughs> I've culled this from the work of uh, Eamon Skelton as uh, uh, so much of my stuff is, is has been based on his uh, tremendous work and uh, but yes uh, so I, but I've used a different transistor and actually used two two transistors in there so these are the 2N3866 um, which I got for free I think from the uh, GQRP club club sales if you bought some other things um, you could uh, request a few of these for free so that they're great um, uh, transistors and they will uh, take a bit more power I think they're rated uh, at a watt I think if I'm not mistaken so um, we're not using them at anything like that of course but uh, but it is good uh, I and as you saw I, I used a heat sink for these just to dissipate any uh, additional heat that might be uh, generated so yeah there is a matching transformer at the input just to try and improve that match uh, a little bit going in but yeah a very simple circuit with all the usual things that feedback there and the emitted generation etc these are both uh, as you can probably see uh, LT spy simulations and I tend to do that these days when I'm uh, designing things and playing around them before I start you know heating up the iron um, I just have a little play around here first and see if I can uh, get something that stands at a fair chance of working <laughs> at least in theory um, it gives me a better chance perhaps of, uh, of getting it to work in practice then and I'll put a link to both of those schematics in the description right okay well let's have a look at how they actually perform in real life okay so we're going to test um, the uh, the amplifiers um, but in order to do so we've got to set up a test signal now I happen to know that the signal coming out of my uh, second mixer and bandpass filter is about 200 millivolts peak to peak. Okay, but that's close enough for our purposes anyway. Um, so I've set that up on the on the SIG gen so that I get 200 millivolts peak to peak over a 50 ohm load. So obviously that's not what the, uh, the, the SIG gen will say, but it's what the oscilloscope will say going through a 50 ohm load because that's how I measure um, the, uh, the the signal coming out of the radio so I've got my um, I'm seeing a 200 uh, millivolt peak to peak um, sine wave there uh, so that's simulating what would come out of the second mixer and the bandpass filter now what we're going to do is we're going to put that same signal now through these different stages of the amplifier and uh, and see what it does Right, okay, so try and do this one handed. Um, we've got that same 200 millivolts peak to peak is now going through just the bottom stage. So that's the uh, the small signal amplifier, those those two stages of the, the 2N3904 transistor amps. And uh, this is what we get. Okay, so hopefully you can see there um, we're getting about well about two two volts peak to peak and uh we'll go with that two volts peak to peak that's close enough and you'll see we've got some harmonics there because it's uh, it's starting to uh to square off a little um when we when we look at that but that's all right because we're going to um uh, put it through a, a low pass filter uh, in just a moment so uh, we'll call that two two volts so 200 millivolts peak to peak going in to the small signal amplifier 
and two volts peak to peak coming out, going in to the pre-driver. And what do we get out? Now, if you were yeah, obviously building this for yourself, you'd want to test these stages individually as well. But um, I've obviously got them joined together, so I'm not going to do that now. Um, so what I'm going to test now is what's coming off the, the output of both of those amps. And so if we go down to the scope, we will see. Well, about let's call that 11.7 volts, 11.7 volts. And you'll see it's a lovely sine wave um, because it's uh, going through our low pass filter, which is doing a very good job of filtering out all those harmonics. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, 200 millivolts in and 11.7 volts out. So just to... Uh summarize then what we've uh, what we've discovered through that testing and apologies for my little um, uh, <laughs> scribbled diagrams here so you'll see at the top there we started out with uh, a 200 millivolt peak to peak signal coming out of the mixer through the bandpass filter and 200 millivolts peak to peak um, is uh, is 100 micro watts so I told you it was small <laughs> Uh, and we're feeding that signal, and this is the second diagram down. So we're feeding that 200 millivolts peak to peak, that 100 microwatts into the first stage, into the small signal amp. And you saw we're getting out 2 volts peak to peak, which is 10 milliwatts. And 100 microwatts to 10 milliwatts is a gain of 20 dB. And then finally, the third one down, we take that same 2 volts peak to peak, the 10 milliwatts, feed it into the pre-driver, and as you saw, we're getting out 11.7 volts peak to peak, which is 342 milliwatts. And 10 milliwatts to 342 milliwatts is a gain of 15 dB. So overall, when you uh, combine those, we're actually getting... A total gain of 35 dB which is very respectable and, and, and what we needed to do and actually most of the the work uh, the real heavy lifting is is done here in this stage because depending on what you're going to do next if you've got 342 milliwatts you might be able to drive a QRP power amplifier with that and you know and, and treat the pre-driver as a driver and, and you know call it quits um i'm i'm shooting for a bit more power this time so i'm i'm going to put it through into another amplifier which will be a linear amplifier in its own right which i'm going to get about one watt out of it which i'm then going to drive a higher power pa uh, in in this rig uh, and i'm going to have facility so that i can uh, i can use it qrp and i can also use it qro I've never really built any QRO amplifiers before, so it'll be a, a bit of a novelty. Now, if you're interested in how I did those calculations very quickly, I will explain. If you're not, just fast forward this bit. To calculate the power and the gain, there's a couple of ways you can do this. It's very simple, really. Um, you can either use the peak-to-peak -peak voltage that you can read very easily on an oscilloscope, um, and the way to do that then is the, the power gain in dBs uh, is 20 log times the voltage out, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage out, over the peak-to-peak -peak voltage in. And that will give you the power gain uh, in decibels. If you want to use power and use watts, um, then you can. And the power gain in dB is is almost the same, except it's just 10 log the power out over the power in. And, uh, and either of those will work and will give you your power gain in dB. Now, if you're interested in how I calculated the, the power on the, the, the individual um, uh, uh, sections going from peak to peak, voltage to power then that's very simple as well and uh, and that's like this power in watts from peak to peak voltage 
uh, it's a two-stage calculation. So the first step is to calculate the RMS voltage, the root mean square voltage, uh, and that is simply the peak-to-peak -peak voltage divided by 2, which gives you, obviously, the peak voltage, and then you multiply that by 0.7071. 0.7071 and that will give you your RMS voltage and all you do is you plug that then into this bottom equation so the power in watts is the RMS voltage that one you've just calculated squared divided by the load uh, impedance or resistance and uh, in our case that is 50 ohms um, so it will be the RMS voltage squared divided by 50 and that will give you your power in watts. Well, I hope you found that of some interest. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, next time, uh, we're going to look at the next stage, which is the driver amp itself, which, as I've already said, is going to be a linear power amp in its own right, um, although it's not going to put out many watts. Um, but until next time, uh, look after yourselves. Thanks ever so much. Bye-bye.